Hello class, let's learn about the thyroid hormone pathway. So we ended with talking about metabolism and now we're looking at how does the thyroid hormone regulate metabolism. There's a video you can watch on, from YouTube and you can also watch this video, me lecturing about it. Um, but you should have also reviewed looking at the thyroid hormone histology and then hopefully that's self-explanatory and if not, send me a question but now let's look at the thyroid hormone pathway so for this lecture i'm going to try to draw a new one and really talk about what the pathway looks like so it can follow a lot so i'm going to start with a new slide and then i can draw um, what we're looking at here so in the thyroid hormone pathway, again, I want to use the color schemes, you want to really think about the hypothalamus, pituitary, so in this case, we're talking about the anterior pituitary, the adeno hypothesis, and then the thyroid. So we call this the HPT axis, hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis. So this is an axis of regulating metabolism, the way we make energy, the way we get, we convert food to energy. So you should have a homeostasis of the pathway, but the homeostasis doesn't mean it's always the same. It is changing, okay, depending on what's going on also. For example, if you live in Minneapolis, like I did before, and it's minus, minus 25 degrees, your body needs to make more heat and the way it makes more heat is through the metabolic pathway so maybe in the winter then the pathway will be turned on so a good way to appreciate winter weather i know you arizonians don't appreciate winter weather is that winter maybe you burn a little bit more calorie trying to keep your body warm i remember in minneapolis i was set the temperature not too warm not too comfortable not wasting a lot of energy because that allows my body to generate heat and um, to make an energy. Anyway, you can also, as a kid grows, um, the pathway can also be stimulated. So now let's just talk about stimulation of the pathway, but the pathway doesn't always have to be stimulated. As we age, we all know, and the pathway does slow down. So the stimulus is lower, but let's just talk about the higher levels of stimulus or lower levels of stimulus, right? So, okay, let's just think about our kid. My daughter is uh, 11 years old and she's going through growth spurts. So when her body processes all the information, says, oh, it's time to grow a few inches, it's gonna send the stimulus to the hypothalamus, my CEO controlling the metabolism, the energy level needed for her to grow. So when turn that on, the hypothalamus is gonna release a hormone called thyrotropin releasing hormone t r h thyrotropin releasing hormone is a hormone but because tropic it's to stimulate it's actually a stimulatory hormone so as it's sending this hormone it's sending a positive stimulation message turning the downstream organ on okay so it's important to think that the green light go the hormone is telling it to go once this hormone binds to the pituitary gland via the receptor so you will have receptors here for trh so i'm just going to draw a little thing like this trh receptor The TRH receptor receives the TRH and it says, oh, the CEO of the hypothalamus is telling me to make more for growth. So it is going to release another hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH. TSH stimulating, the, the name itself is suggesting that it is a stimulatory signal. So that signal is going to be a on signal on the thyroid so this is our green light go okay and then the thyroid is going to then release the actual final thyroid hormone 
or T3, T4. The thyroid hormone is the final product that acts on metabolism, the process where you convert energy. So this is going to go towards metabolism. And we'll talk about those responses in, in just a minute. So that this is going to go to metabolism. So as you can see that when you make this pathway, you have three hormones that are turning on metabolism. So the more my daughter is getting a signal to grow, the more stimulus is commonly to come into the hypothalamus. So the higher TRH, the higher TSH, and the higher TH. Well, you can't just keep on going high, 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 and metabolism going high, high, high. That is not homeostasis. So how do you get a homeostasis in a HP access situation? You have to have a way to turn things off. Okay, so to turn things off, this is ingenious in some way, you use the bottom acting hormone because that is your final acting hormone. That hormone can talk back to the upstream boss and negatively regulate that. So that's called negative feedback. So the downstream hormone, TH, is talking back to the boss and say, hey, uh, I have enough or hey, send more. So that's a really nice system. There's actually is also a feedback to the pituitary gland, but we don't have to worry too, too much about all that, but just know that there is a feedback regulation. So if you think about it, there is stimulation of, let's turn the system on, go, make TH metabolism, and off, going back and turning off. So there's a constant feeding of on and off. You know, every mother in this class probably have worry about your kid not eating enough or eating too much. So sometimes that is actually a normal body homeostasis process because when you have a growth spur, your body will say, okay, I need to more TRH, more TSH, and more TH, more metabolism, take the food and make energy grow. And then the next week, the feedback says, oh no, stop. Then they're not eating as much, okay? So there's always this on and off, on and off. Our body's doing this constantly to make sure that we are getting the correct metabolism for appropriate for um, what we are doing, okay? So that is how we uh, regulate. I will explain negative feedback in a little more detail in the next video, but I want you to go over and think about this pathway and what is the metabolic response. So when you think about what is the metabolic response, you want to make sure you're looking at the equation, right? So the equation metabolism is right here, making up ATP. And you're making ATP, you want to be thinking about, well, if metabolic rate goes up, then I need more oxygen to make more ATP. The heat is the ATP itself. The heart need to pump the supplies to the cells, right? And then the appetite going up. So um, you, like I said, thyroid hormone increases all of this, but you cannot have constantly always up. So you need to take away negative feedback to make sure that the, there is a balance of homeostasis. So I need to review the steps that also outline typed up direction on how to do this. There's a, another cyclic um, figure to look at that. So take your notes, draw it all, really think about it. And then, like I said, in the next slide, I'll explain a little bit more about negative feedback.